Ready for adventure! You said it, Captain Toad. So Captain Toad's back in a puzzling adventure far grander than the Super Mario 3D World escapade, and he's brought his BFF Toadette along for the ride too. In between them both, you'll have to explore more than 70 puzzle-filled levels, while collecting treasure along the way in the form of power stars, hidden gems, and other shiny things. But it's the process of getting at those collectibles that makes the game feel so different. And that's largely because each level is built like an elaborate diorama. I mean, most levels fit on a single screen, but there's a ton of depth to each one. And you'll have to look upon them from pretty much every angle imaginable to discover everything they conceal, whether it's hidden passageways, secret alcoves, or myriad collectibles. Basically, the camera's role in the game is just as important as Captain Toad's himself, as you'll be moving it around and changing the angle constantly. Now because Captain Toad can't jump, getting to the end of each level can be a real head-scratcher. Particularly when the levels involve elements like sliding entire sections of the world around, rotating half of a level, or navigating a series of gates arrays and lower with a push of a button, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. But it's how Captain Toad mixes these puzzle elements with the more conventional platforming style of Mario games that really lends the game its unique feel. I mean, you'll still have to dodge a ton of enemies after all, while carefully crossing some seriously dangerous terrain. Hell, there are even boss fights to tackle. For a puzzle game, it's a rather lively experience. And the amount of mileage the game's creators get out of this concept is astonishing, as nearly every one of the 70 plus levels looks and feels entirely different from the others. I mean, one moment you'll be exploring some ancient ruins, while the next you're riding a minecart through a sparkling cavern. In short, Captain Toad really is a novel experience. Never before has camera control been such an essential part of a Nintendo game, but it's perhaps that very thing that's also the game's biggest problem. And that's simply the fact that the camera, well, it's not perfect. Now one of those problems is pretty much an intrinsic part of the game itself. And that's the fact that, because the levels are so deeply layered and multifaceted, it means that there are often times where your viewpoint is obstructed by some kind of object, whether it's a wall, a platform, or something else entirely, making it a constant battle to get a clear view of Toad and his surroundings. And this is made all the trickier when you have enemies hot on your tail. I feel like this could have been mostly fixed by, say, allowing the camera to see through the walls when you zoom in. And speaking of zooming in, I felt the camera was rarely ever at a comfortable distance to the action. It was either too far away, making me feel detached from the action, or too close to be useful when zoomed in. It's a little bit odd that you have full control over the rotation of the camera, but almost none over its distance. But perhaps the most baffling thing about the camera are the motion controls. Because, besides using the control stick, you can also tilt the gamepad to control the camera. But I didn't find this to be of much use, because it's pretty much impossible to tilt the gamepad far enough to move the camera while playing comfortably. Now normally that wouldn't be a big deal, but unfortunately there's no way to turn this feature off. Which means nearly every tilt or shake of the gamepad is translated on the screen in the form of sporadic camera movement. And speaking of the gamepad, several of the levels also make use of the touchscreen in order to move some platforms around by tapping on them. But I found this implementation to be a little bit jarring, forcing me to shift focus from the TV to the gamepad and back again. Which can be a little disorienting and frankly annoying. I actually feel like the Wii Remote would have been a better option to play this game with, allowing you to interact with the platforms on the same screen using the pointer, rather than requiring the redundant use of two separate screens that display the same thing. Another control quirk is the fact that, if you forget to hold the run button before picking up an item, there's no way to run afterward without throwing it, which is especially troublesome in some enemy-filled areas. Now let me stress that none of these issues are that large of problems in and of themselves, but when taken together, they did compromise my enjoyment of the game overall. But rest assured, there's still a lot to enjoy, whether it's the endlessly creative level design, the cute visuals, or just how darn charming the game really is. I really did love flipping through Toad's travelogue and seeing the occasional drawing documenting their adventures. It's just too bad that a few small issues interfere with, with what's otherwise a very polished and overall pleasant experience. So all in all, I like Captain Toad Treasure Tracker. It's a charming experience that features creative levels nearly all the way through. And I did enjoy unraveling the intricate design of each one, even in spite of the camera issues I had. Thanks for watching, and make sure to stay tuned to GameExplained.com for more on Captain Toad Treasure Tracker and other things gaming too.